Okay, so since we're starting a new chapter today, I thought I would have you all begin with sort of a digital hands-on activity to expose you to some of the ideas that are going to take place in this chapter. So I need everybody to have their digital device out for the lesson. We are actually going to start by taking some brief notes, so I kind of want you to set your computer aside initially. Uh, and then once we begin using our devices, you are only going to be doing the guess my correlation game, which is what we're doing today. I don't want anybody checking email, going on progress book or Edmodo, doing homework for another class, none of that. Everybody is focused on the task that we are working on today. So to reiterate, we're going to start by taking some notes, and then I'll have you guys actually open up your devices and get started on this activity. So we are beginning chapter three, which is about relationships between two quantitative variables. Uh, as a reminder, the word quantitative means that these variables are numerical, okay? They are variables that can be counted or measured, such as height, weight, GPA, salary, okay? And so in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the relationship between two of these variables at a time. So for example, is there a relationship between people's heights and their weights? Okay, those are both quantitative variables. So, so far, the data we have been studying is univariate, meaning one variable. We're now instead going to be looking at bivariate data, which means two variables. Many cases of bivariate or multivariate data include categorical variables, but we're not going to deal with that in this chapter. We will deal with it later, but in this chapter specifically, we're going to be looking at two variables at a time, and they are both going to be quantitative. The most common way that we display bivariate data is with a scatter plot. So we're going to add scatter plots to your uh, list of graphs that you're responsible for. In chapter one, you learned all about histograms, box plots, stem plots, dot plots, ogives. Those were all graphs of a single variable. Uh, and typically, with a lot of those, such as histograms or dot plots, we had the values of the quantitative variable on the x-axis, and we had frequency on the y-axis. However, we now have two variables. And so with bivariate data, with a scatter plot, we typically put one of our variables on the x-axis and the other on the y-axis. And then each dot in the scatter plot represents one observation, we can trace that observation to the x-axis and find its value of the x variable. And we can trace that point to the y-axis and find its value for the y variable. So looking at this first scatter plot, the one on the left, uh, I see that on the x-axis it says husband's age, and on the y-axis it says wife's age. Okay, so here each point is going to represent one couple and I can trace them to the x-axis and find within that couple the age of the husband and trace to the y-axis and find the age of the wife. And what the trend that I see here is roughly an increasing trend in that the younger the husband is in a couple, the younger the wife tends to be, and the older the husband, the older the wife. Now, of course, there are some points that kind of defy this, uh, this pattern a little bit, but for the most part, we see a pretty strong trend. This second scatter plot, the one on the right, uh, this one's a little unusual. I just pulled this off of Google Images, but the x-axis appears to be the number of deaths and injuries per, uh, I'm not sure, it says per head uh, in a certain city. And then on the y-axis is the amount of money that that city spent on firefighting. Okay, so weird, but they're probably trying to show that as the uh, amount of money spent on their firefighting force increases, the number of deaths and injuries decreases. I have a feeling that's what they're trying to show. However, I see a lot of scatter in this scatter plot. I don't see any real pattern, so I don't know that they're really able to show what they're trying to show here in that as one variable increases, the other decreases. When we described univariate data, we had to address three things. I'm gonna, just going to be quiet for a second and let you all shout out what were the three things we had to address when we were describing a set of univariate data, like in a, a histogram. 
Okay, hopefully, 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 we said center shape and spread. Okay, those were our three descriptors for a set of univariate data. Now with scatter plots, we have a different set of descriptors that we have to address. You're not going to see a scatter plot that looks approximately normal. That doesn't make any sense. And so with a scatter plot, the first thing we have to address, it's kind of like shape, but I'm going to refer to it as form. And the main question you're answering here is, do I see a linear pattern or a curved pattern? If there are any clusters or outliers, those should be pointed out here as well. But the main question here, do I see linearity or do I see some kind of curve? The second descriptor I have to address is direction. Do I see a positive trend or a negative trend? If I were to draw in a line of best fit, would it have a positive slope or a negative slope? Um, so by positive, I mean up and to the right. Hopefully you can see the way my mouse is going. And by negative, I mean down and to the right. Okay, so a negative slope. And the last one I have to address is strength. Do I see a really strong relationship? Is that linearity or that curvature really pronounced to the point where I could draw a line or a curve that would pass through or near most of the points? Or is it moderate or is it weak? Does the strength change as X or Y increase or decrease? Okay, so an example could be I see a relationship that is linear, positive, and strong. Okay, you're going to notice that describing scatter plots is a lot easier than describing histograms or box plots because I don't have a lot of calculation to do here. It's really just giving a visual description. I'm going to come back to that more in later lessons in this chapter, uh, but I want to talk right now about something called correlation. Sometimes the two variables that we're studying appear to have a linear relationship. There is something we can quantify, something we can assign a value to um, that gives us both the strength and the direction of this linear relationship. This is called correlation. And I'm sure you've heard the word correlation before and you've probably heard it used incorrectly. Uh, because in this sense, correlation is a number. It is a numerical value. We abbreviate it, sorry, with the letter R. R stands for correlation. I'm going to teach you later how to find the correlation. Uh, it has to do with finding uh, standard deviations and standardized values for each value of each variable. But for now, I want to sort of give you an intuitive sense of what R, the correlation, actually means. R is a value strictly between negative 1 and positive 1. It can take on any number between and including negative 1 and positive 1. If R is positive, if we have a positive correlation, that means that the linear relationship has a positive slope. And a negative correlation indicates that we have a negative slope. To be clear, correlation and slope are not the same thing, but they're either both positive or both negative. The closer my correlation is to positive 1 or negative 1, the closer to a straight line our points are. So if I have a correlation of exactly positive 1, that means my points are perfectly lying on a positively sloped line. If my correlation is negative 1, that means my points are lying on a perfectly negatively sloped line. Okay, so if I could literally connect the dots and I have a line, then either I have a correlation of 1 or negative 1. Uh, it just depends on if that line has a positive slope or a negative slope. I want you to think about what a correlation of 0 would look like. A correlation of 0 does not mean a slope of 0. That's actually a completely different case. A correlation of 0 is going to look like just random scatter. Okay, it's going to look like, this is gross, but it's going to look like you sneezed on your paper. Okay, and you've got just kind of a random scattering of points. So a sneeze on a page is a correlation of zero. Okay, no real relationship. So that uh, second scatter plot that I showed you before, the firefighting one, I would say has a correlation pretty close to zero. So now comes the part of the lesson where I want you to get out your digital device and I want you to open an internet browser. Um, if this doesn't work on one browser, try another. I'm not sure on these devices if it works better on Internet Explorer or on Chrome or, or what. So just 
We may have some technical difficulties here, but keep trying until you get it to work. And I need you to go to this web address. It's http colon slash slash istics, I-S-T-I-C-S dot net slash stat slash correlations. Okay, so stat is singular, correlations is positive. I'm going to keep the screen here for a minute and give you guys time to uh, get to that site. What we're going to be doing is playing a game called Guess the Correlation. Don't start yet. Wait for me to explain how you play. We're actually going to play as a group under my group ID. So in a second, you're going to enter that ID. And my deal with you is that the first person from each class period to get a winning streak of 100 gets five percentage points added to their chapter three test. I'll explain what that means in just a second. Okay, hopefully we all at least have that address written down. If not, then maybe pause the video so that everybody can get that. I'm gonna go ahead and open an internet browser. So I'm going to istics.net slash stat slash correlations and it takes me to a page like this now this does run on Java I believe so we may have some issues here guys I'm not there just do your best to figure this out before we start down here at the bottom it says it's more fun to compete to compete against your group enter its ID our ID is a m h nine AMH nine so hit go go oh here we go and yours may have some scores over here now because students have been playing this today um, here's what we're gonna do so on each page it's going to give you four different scatter plots. There are no variables written in. There are no numbers really written in. And for each of these four scatter plots, you're given the choice of four different values of the correlation. Notice they're all the same between the four. And this is a matching game, okay? So my options for these four are a correlation of 0.92, which I notice is positive and close to one. 0.53, which is positive, but pretty much between 0 and 1. Negative 0.45, which is negative and pretty much between 0 and negative 1. And negative 0.79, which is negative, but closer to negative 1 than it is to 0. And so here's my thought process. These two on the left, for me, yours look different. These two on the left for me are both the negative ones. And the stronger one is the one on the bottom, so I'm going to put that as the negative 0.79, and the weaker one is the negative 0.45, because it's closer to zero. Of these two on the right, they're both positive, so that's my 0.92 and my 0.53. The stronger one is the top right, and then the weaker one is the one below it. So then I'm going to hit check answers, and I got all four of them right. And so here's what it says, round one result. <laughs> round one result, four correct. So far, four out of four equals 100%. Current streak, that's what matters. Current streak, four correct in a row. That's what I meant when I said you have to get a streak of 100, okay? I need you to get 100 of these in a row correct. So I'm going to hit get new plots. I'll do one more of these together with you. Every set is different. Um, now this is kind of interesting because you notice that 0.94 is repeated. Okay, and I know pretty clearly looking at these four options that the 0.94s have to be these top two. If it literally repeats one, then it doesn't matter which one you put. Uh, you can't get those two wrong as long as you don't actually get them wrong. Uh, the weakest one is this bottom left, so I'm going to put that as the one closest to zero, negative 0.1. It does look a little bit negative to me. And then negative 0.79 here. I hit check answers. And I got them right. So now my streak is eight. Current streak, eight correct in a row. Okay. Um, and then notice you see at the top it would have accepted either 0.94 for both of them. Now on this next one I'm going to get one wrong on purpose. Okay. Or this looks a little tricky so it might not be on purpose. Uh, I know that the only positive one is the bottom right. So that's my 0.79. Uh, of these other three, I kind of think the bottom left looks the weakest to me, so I'm going to choose negative 0.53 here. Shoot, this one's kind of tricky. Um, I would say between these top two, 
that the top right is the stronger one, so negative 0.7, and that this one is negative 0.62. This is what I think is correct, but I'm actually just going to change this one and get it wrong on purpose to show you what happens there. If I check answers, oh no, I got it wrong. But it says, congratulations, your score is in the top 20. Enter your name if you wish to appear on the list. Okay. Uh, and so this is really important, guys. Please put your actual name. If I am seeing or if the substitute teacher is seeing anybody using inappropriate names, or really writing anything other than their actual name here, we're going to stop doing this because uh, clearly then you're not mature enough to handle something like this. So I'm going to write Mrs. Kramer. Uh, you're going to write your actual name if this happens. And now I'm on the top 20 scores, okay? Uh, it's kind of funny. It looks like I got both of these wrong. So I was wrong in my, my assessment of those anyway. Um... Okay, so my score is 10. That was my streak. Your goal is to get a streak of at least 100, okay? And the first person from each class period to do that, as I said, will get five extra credit points added to their Chapter 3 test. I'll be able to monitor because I'll be able to see the, the top scores um, at the end of the day from home, okay? So it says my best streak so far was 10. That would not be enough for the extra credit. So now that you guys have seen me go through a few rounds of this, I want you to start. Please make sure you're in the group. The group ID again is AMH9. And uh, make sure we're only working on this. We're not checking email. We're not doing Edmodo or, or anything like that. And you're doing this until the end of the period. This is going to give you a good sense of intuition about correlation. Uh, and hopefully it's a little bit of fun too.